Alrighty, we just pulled the head. Tiny little head. That's my foot compared to the cylinder head. Uh, but this is the inside of a one liter four cylinder from 1963, but designed way back when in the late 40s, early 50s. Yeah, itty bitty. See, we got some high compression piston action going on. Get us up from our regular six to one to six and a half to one. Um, there's a lot of junk in this cooling system. I don't know if you guys can see in there or not. Hold on, a flashlight. Where did the flashlight go? Where? There we go. So, pretty dirty. Look at all that rust in there. My goodness. So, I'm wondering how clogged she's going to be. And look at all that. Come on. Look at all that down there. Come on. Look at it all. So yeah, it's going to need a thorough, thorough cleaning. We're going to be pulling the, uh, pulling that lower hose off. And, uh, I know when my mom and her, um, when my mom put the, uh, radiator on, I was not there. I was busy doing other, working on other things. But she said they cleaned out the basin. Because this whole front end is your steering gear slash lower cooling reservoir that the radiator bolts to. It's your lower radiator tank. Um, slash your axle mount, slash your power steering gearbox um, it's all you have your block in the middle then you have your front section and your bell housing um, but that is neither here nor there at this point um, but what I'm saying is maybe some of that rust got flushed but there's no water pump there's no uh, pressure on the system or there hasn't been since she's been running it so maybe all that rust is just sitting there and I can pop that hose off and just and hose the hose the block out. And that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's probably the issue. It's probably probably passages blocked in there. We gotta go through with the brush, clean them up. We gotta scrape all these all this gunk off the head. With the carbon scraper. Just give it a thorough clean. And uh, put a new head gasket on. It was a uh, MLS head gasket on here, interestingly enough. I can get one for a 1960s 11 horse tractor, but if I want one for my 1970 Oldsmobile, no, sorry. $100. <laughs> really? And it's also not the factory spec. It's irritating. But yeah, so the goal is to clean out this junk. All that junk. Mm, that's a lot. It's a lot down there at the base of that cylinder. Look at that. Oh, look at, look at that. My goodness. So yeah. Pressure wash. Clean it out nice. Get all this junk out of here. These carbon deposits. So yeah. We'll do a little scraping. We'll pop that lower hose off. And then I think I'm going to call it quits for the night. Alrighty. We got the uh, carbon deposits cleaned up. Looking nice and clean, but you can see in the cylinder walls. Not a whole lot of cross hatching left. Not that there was any when it was new either. We're going to throw a quick hone on this. We're going to wipe the cylinder out, of course. Spray it down, wipe it out. 
and we're just going to do a quick hone with the three pad hone, some ATF with the cylinders still in there. So just really easy, just really easy, really nice. Um, just to put something in there for the, uh, cause I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we're burning a little bit of oil. This is why we're oil fouling out. Um, so we're just going to do this as a band-aid fix. Eventually, new rings. These are already 20 oversized. You can see stamped in the top there, 20. But there's so much material in this block, it really doesn't... I mean, you could... We could go up to 50 if we really wanted to. Or... I'm just saying we're not going... We're not going to do that. Next rebuild, probably just go a little bit over. Probably go to 30, but... Whatever it takes to clean them up. If this motor ever gets rebuilt, if it keeps running the way it has with this, I'm not really all that concerned. We will uh, just clean the plugs on a regular basis once a year, clean the plugs and call it good. It's not like it's high compression or anything. And then once a year, I'd like to run some seafoam through the tank and put a little ATF uh, through the carburetor, like through the throat of the carburetor, pick it up and clean the top end and then you pour a little water and you steam clean the top end too. And on these updraft carburetors it should should manage it decently. <clears throat> but we're gonna spray it down with some brake clean, wipe it out, and uh we will uh we might not use that pad hone. It's a little big. But um it's gonna get honed out, so just, just a quick cleanup, nothing too big. And then we'll do the other two cylinders, obviously. And then, once it's honed, we'll get the garden hose over here. Um, actually, before we do that, I'm going to pour some cleaner down in the cooling system just a little bit. And then we will get the garden hose over here and start pressure washing it out um, with the pressure washing tip. But, yeah, so we'll do that quick. Alrighty, so stayed a little bit longer than I was planning on it. We flushed the cooling system as good as I can. Um, doing a little experimentation on this engine. So I went through and I cleaned the bores. I've hosed it down in WD-40, preventing flash rusting. Same thing on the surface of the head. Um, blew all the water off. Um, so it's not going to flash rust, but then I took some free all, which I really love. Freol and Croil are like the best products. Get rid of that. The only reason I buy that blaster is because when it goes on sale, it's cheap. And it's it's okay. But Croil and Freol, those are the best that I've seen. And I was just talking with one of my friends who's a salesman for Lawson. And he says their penetrating oil is pretty much Croil. So uh, that's that's good to know. Um he says uh, he, he, he said it wasn't exactly like Croyle. He said it was nearly as good as Croyle, but you can get a lot cheaper, which is nice. Um, but so I took some Croyle. It's still a little rusty in there. There's still some deposits I can't get out, which I doubt you guys will be able to see if I shine my light down in there. Um, But like that, between those two case, those two cylinders was solid, solid junk. Um, so I've sprayed a bunch of croil in here, and I'm hoping it's going to eat away at some of these places I can't really get to with a scraper, like down in there. It's not. I'm not going to get all that out. There's no way. I mean, I can probably sneak a really long pick down there and break it free. We are going to flush the block. One or two more times before I consider it done, so. Um, but, we got a lot out of the uh, system. Here's everything that came out of the block. Uh, and you can see that's quite a lot. And I've already dumped this bucket out, you know, twice with water. So some of what was in the block went out with the water. But that's pretty much all of it. And I haven't ran a magnet through to see if it's like iron particles or... Some of it was soft, like gasket material that got sent through the system. 
Um, these tractors, as far as I know, they really don't get taken care of very well. Um, and being a thermosiphon, they don't get properly flushed or their coolant track changed regularly. That's why the passages are so corroded because the anti-corrosive um, agents inside the antifreeze are not um, present. They break down over time. That's what happens to your block. Or, you know, tractors down south where they wouldn't run these in the wintertime. They just fill them with water and then just drain them. And then in the summertime, fill them up with water again and call it good. So uh, those blocks, would, I would imagine, would be especially rusty. But this one is pretty run-of-the-mill for old tractors that um, are used by people because they just don't maintain them. But these, uh, yes, because all these thermosiphon tractors need to get flushed regularly and back flushed and taken care of. Otherwise, all this stuff builds up and contributes to overheating problems. Um, but I got to go through, I got to clean the water next too. Uh, that guy and that guy both have to get cleaned. Um, I think we're going to... shoot the hose up on top of the radiator and try and uh, try and uh, flush out the basin just one more time just in case you know you never know and then we're going to put the seven pound radiator cap on without a broken seal um, and uh, yeah but definitely was overheating not just normal thermo siphon bleeding off because it would bleed off and then it would suck in a bunch more coolant and then it would bleed off and then it would suck it down that's why we have this level on the side is it would heat up and go down and go up and go down and before we had that on we ran it my mom was running it started to sound a little funny so she shut it off and it was bone dry in the radiator so my uncle had to run out there in the pickup and dump like a gallon and a half of coolant in there or something. I don't even know how big this capacity is, but basically he had to fill the whole thing up. It was dry. Somehow it managed to force all the coolant out. Um, I'm thinking it's mostly the cap, but definitely not a good sign. You know, you don't have high flow because there's no water pump. It's just, it just naturally flows. You know, there's no pressure. Like if there's no... There's no flow. I mean, there's pressure in the system when you have it sealed, but there's no velocity to the to the coolant. So you have to make sure it's really clean so it can flow nice and easy. Um, we have a new radiator. We keep the radiator clean so we don't get it full of cotton from the uh, from the dandelions and wildflowers and stuff like that. Um, and now, of course, there's really going to be a little oil and oil and wa uh, water mixed together because the valves are open. But it's getting oil changed, so I'm not too concerned about that. A um, lot of junk in this motor that shouldn't have been there. Um, but it is quarter after midnight, I believe. Quarter after 12:30, something like that. I should probably go home. And uh, take a shower and go to bed. But this is the main thing the tractor is here for. We'll we'll throw the cylinder head back on before we uh, worry about the hydraulic leak. Throw the cylinder head back on. Run a little fuel down the line. Start it up. Make sure it runs good. And then we'll worry. And then we'll get to fixing the hydraulic leak. And getting everything else taken care of. I don't have to do any of the maintenance on this. My, this is my mother's tractor. She's going to come down and do the oil, the fluid changes and the uh, the grease points. So the steering, grease the the steering, steering column support. Grease the axles in the back. Grease the swing arm. Once we fix the hydraulic leak, grease the swing arm for the soft touch hydraulics. And, yeah, um, that's about it. At some point, this fuel tank's got to get lined, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'd like to do it now, but 
We'll see. We'll see what happens. But that's it. Adios until next time.